Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of whatonearthishappening.com. Thank you to Brandon Martin and the other great organizers of the Seed 5 conference. It's a pleasure to be here today. My presentation for today is entitled Technology's Critical Role in the War for Freedom. This is something that I have been wanting to formalize for quite a while because it's a topic that I think is uh, very much not understood in the freedom community in particular. And this is going to be a short form uh, presentation. And I just want to get out a few general conceptual ideas regarding technology regarding the technological component to the solution for human freedom. And again, as I said, um, I've been wanting to do this presentation for a while. So again, thank you to uh, everyone from the Seed 5 event. And uh, this gives me a perfect opportunity to uh, formalize this information, get it out there to people. So let's jump in to the presentation. The question that I have been asking myself and others is why, in particular, is the great work of ending the human condition of slavery not truly being accomplished in earnest in our world? And for those who think that it is moving in uh, a, a good and or positive direction, um, and those who are not realizing that we are not winning this war for our freedom, we are losing it. Uh, I would say people like that are quite delusional, unfortunately. Um, they really have a skewed and distorted view of the way that things are heading when it comes to human freedom. And uh, the state of affairs in which we live is ever increasing tyranny and the chains literally are tightening all around us. If you couldn't tell that by the events of uh, the COVID uh, nonsense that just played out recently in our world in the last few years, uh, practically nothing may wake people up from their um, media-induced slumber. Uh, but what I try to do as a person who is attempting to influence people toward a true moral direction in life is I want to ask the question, why are we really not truly accomplishing this task? And of course, the question, the uh, answer is going to come in the form that humanity really doesn't understand natural law and objective morality yet, uh, because these are the only real solutions to ending the human condition of slavery on our world. So upon the recognition that through studying the occult, through studying uh, the underlying causal factors that drive humanity in one direction or another, either toward true freedom or toward enslavement, uh, one, if they are uh, adept in studying this and they're astute and their uh, observational powers are tuned correctly, they're going to come to the, that realization that there's only one real solution. Uh, you can say there are a lot of different components to that solution. You could say there are social components, organizational components, technological components, um, many, many different aspects to help you to get there, but ultimately the underlying causal factors for getting you out of the condition of slavery are singular. They, they're, they're one thing, and that is humanity's recognition of natural law and objective morality, and then aligning their behavior to those realities. That's the only way we're ever going to get out of tyranny and enslavement and to true freedom, societally, globally. So that is our ultimate objective and goal. 
There is only one true solution to human slavery. Natural law and objective morality must be communicated to the masses of humanity. If this is not done, it is completely impossible for any truly positive social change to occur in our world in the long term. If people have not made that fundamental recognition yet, then they don't understand the actual universal dynamics that drive this type of change in our world. This is what I have been attempting to communicate and teach to people for the past, uh, you know, 16 going on 17 years with what on earth is happening. And unfortunately, many people still don't understand this which is the core body of the work that I teach at whatonearthishappening.com through my presentations and my podcast series. So that has to be clearly and definitively and deeply understood first. Okay, That's the ultimate solution, the ultimate objective that we're trying to get to. But What I'm addressing here today in this presentation is that most people do not understand that there is a very deeply connected technological component to being able to do this. And I'm going to explain what that is and why it is so. So people always say they want freedom. This is part of what I've talked about in my work endlessly. What people say versus how they behave. There's a disconnect. Okay, They'll say one thing and yet they'll do something different. It doesn't get you to that condition. They'll say they want a certain condition, but they don't perform the behaviors that manifest that condition in the real world. So this is a incongruity. It's a disconnect between what someone says that they want in their mind and they're communicating that through their words and they may even have the emotional state that they really genuinely want to see it come about but they don't care enough to do the behaviors that are going to actually bring about that condition in manifested reality that's the real laws of attraction ladies and gentlemen it's not how much you wish for something you want it to be so in your mind how how much your emotions are even in line with your thoughts. It's all about how much your actions are in line with your thoughts and emotions. And are you doing what is required, the requirements for bringing about that condition in the real world? So people say, people who say they want freedom, unfortunately, do not want to involve themselves at a deep level in the very arduous task of communicating the necessary information that other people need to see and hear. See, what got us here into this state of enslavement and tyranny? What got us here were people speaking incorrect ideas to other people and other people listening to those ideas. And what got us here in a major global way is people namely the mainstream media, communicating through technology, largely television, newspapers, radio, magazines, movies, etc. All of the people who are willing to take a paycheck to lie, deceive, and manipulate the masses of humanity into believing and thinking wrong thoughts and incorrect information. That is what got us into this state. That is what the government uses as a mechanism to enslave the minds of people. Once you control how they think, you control their behavior. This is occult 101. Okay? And yet, many people still don't understand that. So, when you talk to people in the freedom movement, alleged freedom movement, as I say, we don't have a real freedom movement. You know, we have what we laughingly call the 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 embryonic stage of a freedom movement but it's not moving anywhere unfortunately people will say they want freedom but then once again they don't want to really deeply involve themselves they don't want to put skin in the game they don't want to make the necessary sacrifices they don't want to meet the commitment to creating the circumstances and fulfilling the requirements that actually manifest freedom in the world 
They want to talk about it. They want to complain. You know, they want to point fingers externally. But they don't want to turn the finger toward themselves and say, what am I doing to actually make it come about by influencing how people think? If you recognize that the, all of the lying media throughout the world, the mainstream media controlled by government, controlled by intelligence agencies, controlled by the dark occult, have put out all of this information to deceive and manipulate, and they pay people who are technologically advanced and trained into creating media to influence the minds of the people of the world to think wrong thoughts and ultimately do wrong behaviors. That is how we've arrived at this condition. And people never think in their mind, most people in the freedom movement never think, we have to become the, the true media that is reaching out to people and influencing them to truly understand natural law and objective morality and align their behavior to it. So we undo this condition of tyranny and enslavement and we create an actual positive outcome for the human future. It's simple logic, folks. If you just think it logically through, you recognize that the problem is lack of communication of truth to the people of the world, whereas they're continuously being bombarded nonstop with the lies and with disinformation and with deception. Then they graft onto that, they start believing in it, it informs their whole belief system, and then ultimately it informs their behavior. And once immoral behavior stacks up in the aggregate, what are you going to get? You're going to get tyranny and enslavement. That's the law of freedom. If you're paying attention, if you understand how it really works, if you've studied the occult enough to understand those dynamics, and again, most people haven't, unfortunately, so you have a ton of people that sit back for a number of reasons and they keep their mouth shut. You know, it's the speak no evil part of hear no evil, see no evil, speak, speak no evil. And these people sit back because they're afraid. They have a lot of cowardice. They don't want to be uh, singled out. They think that, you know, uh, they have to fade into the background and, and, and be quiet or they think... Uh, nobody will listen to them. They won't garner any influence. They have no confidence in their own ability to communicate the information correctly and properly, and other people won't listen. And that's why they generally never even begin. Again, that's why the dark occultists call people like that the unbegun. It's not just the people who don't know the information. It's people who know it and don't ever start doing anything with it. Okay? They constitute the, quote, unbegun as well. And the freedom movement is absolutely chock full to the brim with people like this. Who they know a little bit, and yet they don't know enough to actually act in the world. And understand that what their actual task is, is to communicate what they know to other people. To help influence their mind and influence ultimately their behavior. Even if someone were to want to get involved, and I encounter these people all the time, they want to get involved, they say, what can I do? I don't even know where to begin. I don't know what I can do to get involved. See, they say that they want freedom and they know that something must be done action-wise to get involved in the effort to create the condition of freedom, but they have no idea how to effectively communicate the necessary information, and they have no idea how to do that in a very widely distributed way. In other words, it can't just be, I'm going to go and talk to a family member or a friend or a neighbor down the street. That's not going to get the information out there in a wide enough way. And again, this is simple logic, folks. This is not rocket science. This is not extreme esoteric information here. This is basic, simple logic and thinking through how information propagates and proliferates. It's not that difficult to figure out. It's just a little bit of logical thought has to be applied, getting your emotions out of the way of it, 
and just thinking through how this would occur. And most people never engage in that kind of thinking. They just are just, they're all over the place and their mind is just scattered and they never focus in and think, how would this be done in a practical way? So even if you have somebody that might be even willing to communicate the truth, they don't know how to do that in a modern form that's going to get that information out to a whole lot of people, out to the, to the masses of humanity in a distributed fashion. When I'm analyzing this problem, I come to the fundamental conclusion, the recognition that just about everybody the vast overwhelming majority of most human beings on this planet still do not understand the inseparable role, the absolutely critical role that technology and specifically how to use technology, what I am calling technological literacy, has to do with human freedom. They are inseparable. And once again, the solution is not technological. The solution, of course, is spiritual, and it's knowledge of natural law, knowledge of objective morality, that is conscience, and then applying it through our willpower, through our free will choice to do what is right over what is wrong. That's really the solution, but the technological component has to come in, how do you communicate that to other people in a widely distributed fashion? That's technological literacy, knowing how to do that. This is as important as, in the past, learning how to read or write, because that was the most effective and distributed way of communicating information to people that you don't know and who aren't around you. That was the highest technology of the past, unfortunately. That's why the world degenerated in the way that it did. We had no connective technology like we do now in the form of the internet to bring this information to everyone. Now we do, and that's a tremendous opportunity that we should not let go by, uh, unutilized. So almost everybody, especially people in the freedom movement, they do not have this technological literacy. They don't even understand the role the technology will play in human freedom. They haven't fundamentally made that recognition, let alone started to hone their skills in how to do that. Most human beings are not literate in modern communications and publishing technology. They just don't understand it. And unfortunately, and I hear this in the freedom mo- so-called freedom movement all the time, I don't want to learn that. I don't want to sit behind a computer desk. I don't want to go through all that technology and the learning curve that that's going to take to, to, to really grasp it and, and be able to use it. Well, guess what? You might as well flush freedom right down the toilet for yourself and for all the generations to come after you, if that's your mental attitude about it. Okay, because without utilizing technology and getting the word out to the people of the world, nothing is ever going to change for the better. And you better get over that fact. You better understand that fact and you better just get over it, ladies and gentlemen, because um, if you are not part of that solution, you remain part of the problem at large in the world. And people don't want to hear that. And guess what? Get as offended as you like. What I just said is true anyway. If you're not learning how to communicate in the modern digital age and you're not making media and putting that out there into the world to put your voice and help the voice of truth proliferate, you're not putting your voice out there and in doing so helping truth to proliferate throughout the world, you are part of the problem of this world and you are definitely not part of the solution. And I don't care what holds you back from doing that. Unless you have really badly physically limited mental capacity, which unfortunately some people may have, you know, I'll exclude them. And unless you're extremely physically disabled, and some people are unfortunately in a condition like that, we can 
give them a pass because they're physically just not going to be able to do it. But if you're of general sound body and mind, there is zero excuse for you not being able to do it. I don't really care how big your family is, how many children you have, how much, how many hours you have to work, you can squeeze it in in some form or fashion and put your voice out there. Not doing it means you simply don't care enough and you just don't want to do it. Let's let's be real and drop pretenses and talk on the real, okay? It just means you haven't truly developed the care in the heart enough to actually put your voice out there into the world through technology because you just don't want to, you don't care enough to learn about it and you don't want to give of your time and energy and put your voice out there. Bottom line, okay? So... The fact is, most people have stayed completely at zero level skills and knowledge on how to do this. They have not bothered to learn one iota. Okay? They've, they've started at ignorance, and, and time has progressed, and they've remained at the same level of ignorance. And that's, that, there is no excuse for that. That is an inexcusable condition. And I'm talking about the people within the freedom movement more than anybody else. The people who want to complain, go and protest, hold up signs about lockdowns and shots and all this stuff. And you, you explain to them, you know, you've got to reach people in a, in a massive way, in a truly distributed fashion with information. You can't just hold up a placard at some protest and complain to the people who don't give a damn about what you're complaining about. And expecting them that they're going to do anything? They're the ones who want to bring you into tyranny. And you're going and trying to communicate to them as if they're going to do anything, as if voting is going to do anything. It's delusional child mentality. What you have to do is influence so many people that they never join government, that they don't believe in the moral legitimacy of government, that they'll never try to institute or influence anybody to institute a lockdown because they will know deeply and definitively that's immoral. That's an immoral behavior. That government in general is an immoral behavior. That becoming a cop is an immoral behavior. That joining a military is an immoral behavior. The people of the freedom movement are quite possibly the most illiterate in the modern day. And as I'm going to define what that means, it doesn't mean you don't know how to read and write. You don't know how to read a book or write down words on a sheet of paper. That's not what modern day literacy is. So when most people in the world hear the words not literate, they immediately think it means you don't know how to read or write. Okay, my question here, what do most people think when they hear the words not literate? When I say you're not literate in modern communication and publishing skills, it doesn't mean you don't know how to pick up a book and identify words on the paper. It doesn't mean you can't pick up a pen or a pencil and scribble something down that's halfway intelligible on a piece of paper. That's old world literacy, folks. That's old world literacy. That's not modern literacy. Modern literacy means you know how to use a computer effectively enough that you can communicate ideas to other people and receive information from other people using a modern day computer. And if you can't do that, if you don't know how to both receive it and publish it and communicate it, then you're not literate. I'm sorry. You are an illiterate person in the modern digital age. Who cares if you're old world literate and you can identify words on a sheet of paper or you could write words on a sheet of paper? That is practically meaningless in today's world. In today's society, that is practically meaningless, as I'm going to prove. Okay, just give it another couple of slides and we'll prove that definitively. So I don't mean you can't actually read and write words. I know almost everybody can. There's hardly anybody in modern Western society that can't actually identify words, read words and sentences, understand the meaning of them, write things down on paper. We're not talking about that. Modern day illiteracy means you don't know how to use a computer. 
Modern day illiteracy means you have no technical skills. Modern day illiteracy means you are powerless to communicate what you know to a wide body of other people through publishing it digitally and putting it on the internet. What I call formalizing the information and then immortalizing it by putting it online. You don't know if you don't know how to do that, you're illiterate. So when I say not literate, what I actually mean is you don't understand modern technology. You can't use modern day technology to communicate the information that needs to be communicate, communicated out to the masses of people to truly change society. You cannot influence other people's minds at a distance, which is what true magic and true alchemy is in the modern world. And there's no excuses for it, ladies and gentlemen. Zero excuses. As I said, it doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, how many kids you have, what kind, what kind of job you have. It doesn't matter. No excuse is acceptable when there is a war for freedom going on. Okay? That obviates all your excuses. You know? You don't just say, I just don't know how to do that. Or I'm not good with computers. You know? That was an excuse that still really wasn't acceptable, but that was an excuse back in the late 80s, early 90s, and we're not living in those times anymore. Okay? So it's like, you got to get up off your rear end, and you got to start developing skills to be able to communicate that knowledge. And folks, people fight me on this all day long, all the time. I've been trying to explain this to people for going on 17 years. It'll be in 2024. Imagine that. And this movement is that hard-headed, stubborn, and calcified in their thought process that they still don't understand that that is the solution and answer. They want to kick back and watch other people do it, pat them on the back, say, hey, great, good luck with your mission, and that's not me, and that doesn't apply to me. And you know what that is? It's a completely illegitimate excuse, and it's all based in cowardice and fear is the real truth of the matter when it comes to that. And I know I'm talking to plenty of people out there even watching this event. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. No, no, not you. It's not not you. It is you. Get over it. Get over it. Because you've just kicked back. You've watched other people try to do this. It's not enough effort. Think about how many millions of people worldwide take jobs to lie, deceive, and manipulate through the mainstream media. It's it's literally tens of millions of people worldwide. And what do we have in our movement? A paltry handful of people that know what's really going on and are trying to communicate it, trying to communicate natural law and true morality and get people not to go and join The sectors of evil that are continuously destroying our rights and freedom? You actually believe there's enough influence in the world to get tyranny and freedom to come to a halt? If you do, you're delusional, and you're even more delusional if you think that's not your job. To try to influence people's minds not to do those types of behaviors. It is your job if you understand anything that I've said over the years or anything people who are talking about these topics have said over the years. So, if you go out and do a social experiment on the street or just among your friends online, ask them how they became awakened. What was the process by which they really began to understand what was going on in our world? Just ask them, and they'll tell you. So, if you pose this question to people, what are some of the responses that you are likely to get? How did you become awake to the extent that you are awake now? Not talking about perfect, you know, awakening where we're not talking about knowing everything. We're talking about you are generally very awake and aware as to what is going on regarding the destruction of human rights in the modern day, regarding globalism, regarding dark occultism, regarding the loss of human freedom and the underlying causes for that. Namely, the lack of an understanding of objective morality and natural law not living those pr- according to those principles. If you understand that, you're generally awake. You're awake to the extent that you should be to get 
up off your rear end and start doing something with that information. Okay, But if you ask people who consider themselves awake in that capacity, what awakened them, what kind of answers are you likely to get? Well, let's start by looking at what kind of answers you're not likely to get. Okay, Are people going to tell you that word of mouth conversations woke them up? That they were just around so many enlightened folks that they just had so many of these world changing paradigm shifting conversations with people that they know in real life all around them in their family and friends and neighbors, etc. That that just woke them up and they became aware just by word of mouth. Almost no one in the world will say that. Almost zero people. And guess what? If you are one of those, you're extremely lucky and it's the extreme exception to the rule. Not just a tiny exception to the rule, an extreme exception to the rule. Hardly anybody wakes up that way. Okay? And if you think most people wake up that way, once again, I would say you're a very delusional individual. People do not wake up through word of mouth conversations. It's the most ineffective way of waking, attempting to influence someone to wake up. All right. So what's another very unlikely way? A very unlikely way is handwritten letters and manuscripts. Now break out the fountain pen, folks, and, and, the, and the bowl of ink. You know, that's going to get it done, don't you know? You know, a- any day now, like just, just writing down stuff is just going to wake up the world. Right. This is why how, how the old world literate people think. Oh, I, I know how to read and write. That's good enough for me. Uh, books and letters. That's all we need. I mean, it really is, it, it really is like a one-year-old. I mean, it's, it's, it's worse than that. It's like, it's like somebody whose, like, head has been crushed with a hammer. Like, they have no ability to think it through logically. That's all I'm asking people to do. Just analyze the situation a little bit from a logical perspective. I know that's asking a lot from most people, but try it. And you just... Ask simple questions and answer them and think it through logically. Most people have just never done that. That's the problem. Is writing things down on paper how people woke up? No. Okay? So, this is old world literacy. It's irrelevant in the modern world. How will people tell you that they woke up? Some will tell you that they woke up through books. And that's a legitimate claim. That's a legitimate answer. Okay? Books very much were instrumental in my awakening. But then I accelerated it with digital media. Once the internet came online, and then, you know, high-speed internet came online, and allowed for the distribution of audio and video content very quickly, that was it. I mean, my learning curve went from this to this. You know, it, it, it shot up exponentially parabolically, you know, and that's what technology does. That's the effect that it has in our lives if we utilize it correctly. So some people are going to tell you, yes, they woke up by reading books. Wonderful. Okay. I have a huge physical library myself and that's valid. But how many people themselves, if they have a tremendous body of knowledge to communicate would know how to publish a book. Most people wouldn't even know where to begin, let alone the software to use, how it would actually get printed, how it would be distributed, etc. They have no means, no mechanisms, no know-how on how to do any part of that process. What are more people going to tell you than anything else if you ask them, how did you awaken? They're going to tell you that they became awake by taking in digital forms of media by researching on websites and taking in digital videos, digital audio, digital books, etc. Almost everybody is going to tell you their awakening did did not significantly accelerate until they were exposed to the world of digital media through the internet. Let's be realistic, folks. That's the answer. Okay? That is how the awakening process happens on just about any planet, in the whole universe, in the manifested universe, it's going to have to wait until technology gets to the point where we can unify 
our minds from a global perspective through technology. And I don't mean everybody has to think identically. Obviously, that's not what I mean. I'm talking about we can communicate the ideas that gets the information into the minds of everyone or at least that capacity is present. Then, when people actually start making the media to communicate that way, and it gets out there to in a distributed way to everybody, then people can really start deeply understanding the causal factors and adjusting their mind and ultimately their behaviors to create the real social change that we say we want to see. Once again, folks, this isn't rocket science. If you haven't yet understood that, that's the problem. You haven't been able to logically process how this whole process of transformation works and come to the accurate conclusion about how it does actually work. This is the problem that we're in in the freedom movement. People don't make those logical connections and really deeply understand how the process of transformation of consciousness is achieved. And it is achieved through that technological component of being able to get the information about what's really going on and what is true from a spiritual perspective, from a moral perspective, out to other people in the world. Understanding that, then start looking at the dynamic, how many people actually know how to do that. How many people have those skill sets already developed and honed? How many people would you estimate worldwide, percentage-wise, just a, a, a percentage number, already, right now, in the modern day, in this moment, know how to publish information in the form of digital books, websites, digital videos, digital audio, and other modern forms of media? How many people can communicate and publish information that way? And if you're honest with yourself, you're going to realize it's a paltry handful of human beings, even if they wanted to, even the people who want other people to know this information, how many of them really truly know how to create media and put it out there for others? The mainstream media knows how to do that. All of the corporate, uh, you know, robots that they're hiring to do that to influence people's minds for the worse toward tyranny and enslavement they all have those skills and they're trading them for federal reserve notes they're trading them for their 30 pieces of silver but people in the freedom movement get that technology away from me i don't want to sit behind a computer what do i need to know that for that's not for me you guys are delusional delusional and your grandchildren and great-grandchildren are going to suffer the consequences and i'm not just saying that to fear monger i'm not just saying that because i want you to do what i want you to do i'm trying to get you to understand how freedom propagates truly and what you guys are doing largely the vast majority of people you're squandering the greatest opportunity that we have to generate human freedom Because you're not engaging this dynamic. You're sitting back with your hands underneath your butts, doing nothing, complaining about it, maybe holding up a handwritten sign at some some event or some rally or march, and you have no media of your own to contribute to the voice of truth in the world, while all of the dark occultists are paying people billions of dollars every day to lie, deceive, and manipulate the masses of humanity. And you're not countering that at all. And the people who are ultimately going to pay the consequence of that are future generations of children. And that's going to be on you for not getting involved. That's not going to be on me. My conscience will be perfectly clear of that because I made the effort to do what was required. You did not. Okay? And this isn't a sales pitch, folks. I'm going to talk about how to become the true media in a a future slide. And it's not a sales pitch. You can go ahead and think all you want that it is. It isn't. I'm telling you the truth about what needs to be done. You could take my course, not take my course, dismiss what I'm saying, and it's at your own peril and the peril of future children of this planet. That's the truth of the matter. Regardless of what seminar or program I have going on, the truth remains the truth. 
Get involved in whatever way you need to get involved. Learn how to do it and then actually do it. That's the bottom line. Doesn't you don't you don't need to get that information through me or anybody else in particular. Go out and learn it yourself autodidactically. Become a self-taught person. Be driven to teach yourself. If you want my expertise, yes, it is available, but that's not required. Okay? How many people would you estimate? I, I'm going to say it's less than 1% of human beings. Because you put 100 people in a room, do you think more than one or two people might know how to do these things? Certainly to any effective degree? No way! Not even close! We have to change that dynamic because the vast majority of human beings, especially those in the freedom movement, exist in a state of total ignorance, illiteracy of how to publish and communicate through modern forms of media. They sit back behind a computer. They throw their hands up. I don't know what to do. They don't even understand the basics of an operating system, let alone how to use a computer to actually create the media that's going to change the minds of the people of the world. But guess what? Like I said, the lying corporate horror media, they're doing that every second of every day, and that evil never sleeps. And that's why we're losing this war. We are losing this war. We're not winning. If you think we're winning, and you think we're in a great awakening stage, you're absolutely, completely delusional. You hang around with too many other people who think identically to you and you're not looking at the wide, unwashed masses of people who, yes, influence the world. They'll go and join the military. They'll go and join the cops. They'll go and join government bureaucracy. They'll go and take whatever money to do whatever financial manipulations that the, 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 the masters of the finance world want them to do. They'll go and take whatever 30 pieces of silver they're offered to go and do whatever evil they're commanded to do. That's most people in the world because they never had a moral upbringing. They were never actually raised. They never actually understood. They still don't understand or care about the difference between right or wrong because it was never hammered into them like the desire for money was hammered into them like all the lies and manipulation that was hammered into them by the lying corporate mainstream media. And, and the people in this movement still don't get it. They still don't understand, and they're still sitting on their hands. Sitting on their rear ends, sitting on their hands, doing nothing. And just cheering other people on who are doing something. You have to get involved personally. It isn't about looking at somebody and going, oh, look at the great job they're doing. That's not the point. The question you need to be asking yourself is, what the hell are you doing? Because of this widespread illiteracy in the technological domain, that is the underlying reason that the word is not getting out there regarding natural law and objective morality and that is why the manipulation and deception of human beings continues unchallenged largely unchallenged and that is why human slavery continues largely unchallenged that ladies and gentlemen is the correct and definitive explanation of why the great work of ending human slavery is not being accomplished and if you don't think so you're wrong i'm correct in that analysis and if you don't understand it or you don't agree you are incorrect and you do not have the necessary information or you have not accepted the information that has been laid out and given to you as being correct and true and like I said, you can say I'm arrogant all you want. You can say I'm full of myself. It doesn't make one damn bit of difference to me. That's the truth whether you accept it or not. That's the objective truth. Not because it came out of my mouth. Because it's objectively the way that it is. And I've identified that and I've tried to communicate that. So my, my responsibility is fulfilled. My karmic responsibility is fulfilled. I've communicated what needs to be communicated. The next step is what are you going to do about it? So let me tell you what I have done about this. Not only have I identified the problem, I've identified what needs to be done. I actually contribute to helping people to move into that state of 
possession of those skill sets and then honing them and doing something with those skill sets. No, no, most people not only haven't identified the causal factors, they're not doing any part of the, the great work themselves. They're cheering other people on while sitting on their own hands. And they are not doing anything to help that dynamic get solved. I have a program that I actually attempt to move people into knowledge regarding those skill sets of communication and publishing. I'm sorry, I moved ahead. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. But to solidify this understanding, I just want to state definitively and once and for all, the great work of, any, of ending human slavery will never be accomplished until the knowledge of how to communicate and publish in the modern digital age is acquired by human beings who say that they want freedom and say that they want to end slavery and they want to end tyranny and then put into action in our world. If you have not made that fundamental recognition in your awareness yet, you are still asleep. You could be awake to all the forms of control that are going on. You could be awake to the whole slavery system, to the dark occult and what it does. And ultimately, you're going nowhere with that information because you don't know how to communicate it and publish it in a wide way. Forget about ending slavery and defeating tyranny. It'll never happen until people develop the skill sets to communicate with people in a wide way like the mainstream media does with their lies. We have to do it with the truth and become more powerful than the mainstream media. And folks, I fully make the recognition of how difficult that is. That's why it's called the great work. It's not called let's go have a big party and laugh and dance and play. It's called Sit down and get to work. Which is what I've been trying to tell people for 16 years now. And they just can't grasp it. And then they want to get mad at me for being angry that it hasn't changed in that long of a period of time. That I'm sitting here practically wasting my life telling people the same damn thing over and over and over and over and over again. With no change happening. And not only no change happening, it's getting worse and worse. I shouldn't say no change, it's change for the worse is happening. And we're getting put into deeper and deeper chains. Don't expect anything to change for the better until the information on how to publish and communicate the truth is acquired and put into action in the real world. That's how it actually propagates. So where is the human disconnect in this process? Let's identify in consciousness where the disconnect is. So in order to do that, let's look at the trivium. The trivium is where you go for just about any answer, if you really know how to use it and apply it. If you have clear thinking, if you gather all of the necessary grammar, if you know the logical transforms to apply, and then you come to the correct conclusion about what is necessary to do, the trivium is always going to give you the right answer. Every single time. Because it is the truth discovery methodology. Of course, the classical, esoteric, and modern trivium worded in different ways. The classical trivium of grammar, logic, and rhetoric is what most people know. The esoteric or occult version of the trivium, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And of course, I like to look at the trivium in terms of computer terminology. There's input into a computer, the computer processes the information, and then it outputs it in some form, either onto the screen, to a printer, uh, to a digital document, to the internet, etc. Once again, this is very simple. It's gathering information, coming to an understanding of that information, and then what you do with that information. This isn't rocket science, folks. It's basic logic. It's looking at it, breaking it down simply into, into its basic elements and understanding that process. This is how our world is created. We have availabil availability of information. And some people take a lot of information in, they arrive at a place of knowledge. Some people don't take that information in, they stay in ignorance. Our decision-making is then based on our understanding, which is based on 
Did we take in the necessary information and grasp what it means? Then our behavior is based on those processes that are going on in our mind based on the information that we received. It's a, it's a, it's a logical and stepwise progression. Information, the understanding of that information and how it informs the mind, and then behavior. Then when we do that in the aggregate sense as a species, we get a result. That's how the law of attraction works. That's how karma works. That's how natural law works. We get the result of our manifested human condition. Is it freedom and order or is it slavery and chaos and ultimately heading toward extinction? That's the trivium. Where is the disconnect in the trivium? Well, if we look at it from a slightly different perspective, we can look at it from a perspective of human consciousness based upon that three-step level of the trivium, okay? Our thoughts, emotions, and actions, the three aspects of human consciousness. And how we use those three aspects of consciousness is going to create a karmic outcome for our species in the aggregate, how we all use the trinity within us, thought, emotion, and action. If we use them wisely and we develop them and hone them, we are going to develop intelligence. If we take in the information that we need to take in, we will have intelligence. If we don't, we'll remain in a state of ignorance, as I said in the previous slide. If our emotions are truly developed, we develop true care and courage. Okay, And, of course, that's going to inform action. And if we don't develop our emotions in the ways that need to be developed, we're going to stay in a state of apathy, of not caring enough to drive our actions to do what is necessary. If you're not doing what is necessary, it literally means by definition that you don't care enough. This is what people have to understand. They'll say, I know what's going on. They'll say, I care about it. But if your actions aren't in congruence with what you say you think and what your emotions you are allegedly expressing through your emotions then that incongruity ultimately means you don't truly care and ultimately at the base level you don't truly know what needs to be done and that's the problem people who are not on mission people who are not on their purpose they're not in fulfillment of their purpose and they're certainly not on the way to fulfilling their mission spiritually and then if we either develop or do not develop our thoughts and our emotions, that will inform our behavior, our actions, what we do in life. And we will either develop willpower, persistence, courage, the will to act, the will to do what is right, or we will stay in a state of inaction, cowardice, laziness, not fulfilling the requirements to create freedom. Once again, folks, this is just a simple, logical process of looking at how things work in the world and then logically thinking it through to its correct conclusion. It's not, you know, something that you need a genius level IQ to figure out. It's people don't take, take a step back, quiet the chatter of their mind and just think it through. They've never thought it through like that. Where is the disconnect in this process, in the freedom movement? Is it that people don't have enough information? No, I don't think that that's true. Is it that they really absolutely don't care? I don't think that's true either. They say that they want freedom, and if they didn't care at all, they wouldn't even express the desire to put down tyranny and want to be free. The disconnect is always in level three in stage three their actions they're not moving their intelligence and their care into the stage of direct action in the world they and that's because they don't know how to do that largely largely the reason that they never move into the state of right action is because they don't have the skill sets to do that and people have never thought about it from that perspective. I, The number one thing that I hear in the freedom community, the freedom movement, if you will, is what do I do about it? I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to do. I don't know what my purpose is in this whole war for freedom. I don't know what my purpose or role is. And that is because they have no skills. A person with no skills is going to stand back from the situation, freeze up like a deer in the headlights, and look and play helpless. 
because they're going to say, well, if I don't really have any skill sets, how can I contribute to this war effort? If you don't know how to shoot a battle rifle, how are you going to contribute to a physical war? If you don't know how to wield information through a computer onto the World Wide Web, how are you going to fight an informational war? How are you going to influence minds to change behavior? Do you see how simple, logically, that process unfolds and really works? This should be so simple for people to figure out, and they overthink it. They overcomplexify it. So, to rectify that, you need the skill sets. And this is what I've made the fundamental recognition. People don't have the skill sets. They need to be taught those skill sets. So this is what I offer. I offer a... And again, this isn't an advertisement. I'm just telling you what I do. And you can dismiss this if you want. You can go and get the information from other people if you want. That's not my business. I'm just explaining to you, upon making that recognition, then the best thing that you could do in addition to offering information is you could help to teach people the skill sets that they require. Or at least point them in the right direction about what skill sets they need to acquire. So this is what I do. I teach the skill sets of how to publish and communicate in the modern digital age. It's a six-month course that I offer yearly called How to Become the True Media. 23 weeks of instruction on computers, operating systems, file system, how to create digital media, how to publish that online, how to create a a presence for yourself on the internet and communicate that information out widely in a distributed fashion to the masses of people so we can get the information out to them that they need to help change their thoughts, change their behavior, and ultimately change the condition that humanity is in and end human slavery. So you could check out more of that at howtobecomethetruemedia.com or at my own website, whatonearthishappening.com. Part of what we teach in this seminar is the personal characteristics that have to be developed. It's not just a technological seminar. Again, as I said, the solution is spiritual. The one true solution to ending slavery by communicating natural law and objective morality is a spiritual solution. There is a technological component, but you can't take the technological component in isolation. You have to develop that along with personal characteristics. And those are, you have to know true morality. You have to know true objective morality. You cannot be ambiguous about that. You have to know how natural law really works. You have to know what behaviors are wrongs because they initiate harm to other sentient beings, namely murder, assault, rape, theft, trespass, coercion, and deception. And you have to desist in contributing to any of those behaviors, either directly or indirectly through government. You have to have a care for truth. You have to have a care for justice. You have to have agape care, agape love. Care for what is right and true in the universe. You have to have holistic intelligence, not just left brain intellect. You have to be creative and combine intellect and creativity. You have to have deep motivation, drive, willpower, persistence, never say die attitude. You have to have attention to detail. You have to have communication skills. You have to have, as I said, creativity that goes hand in hand with holistic intelligence. You have to have an appreciation for aesthetics and layout and design and helping people to understand in a visual fashion as well as an auditory one. So that goes creativity and communication go hand in hand. And you got to have thick skin for putting that information out into the world where people may, you know, uh, disagree. They may try to launch ad hominem attacks against you. They may try to uh, put you down for what you're saying and ridicule you. And you have to just go forward with your mission anyway. And that's the development of having thick skin. These are the personal characteristics that are talked about on and on in the seminar. Okay. Uh, They're, they're, Uh, basically paired with then the actual technological skill sets. And the technological skill sets are many. You need organization and time management skills. Because again, not everybody's going to be doing this as their full-time situation. You'll you'll have to make the time to do it. 
And you'll have to or put that into your day in an organizational capacity. Again, communication skills play into how you're going to lay things out and communicate them via media. You need general operating system or general computing skill sets. Big part of what we teach in how to become the true media, getting comfortable with your creative tool which most people don't know the first thing about how to organize a computer or set it up the way they need to set it up to work or navigating the operating system and the file system. They know nothing about those basics, okay? Then you have to learn, again, aesthetics through learning art, graphics, graphics formats, how to lay things out. You know, layout skills that, that comes into print publishing. You need web publishing because you're ultimately going to put this on websites. You need to know how to edit audio and video, whether you're going to do a podcast or maybe a video podcast or a documentary. You need all of those editing skill sets. And if things go wrong with your computer, you need general troubleshooting knowledge. And then you have to be able to network and promote yourself. You know, it's a lot involved. Not going to tell you it's completely easy. You know, as I say in, in the seminar, this is Kung Fu. A lot of people get confused when I say that because they think Kung Fu only applies to the physical martial arts. Kung Fu is a northern Chinese word that just means learning and mastering over a long period of time, something that is challenging and difficult to master, that has a lot to it and involves a lot of learning and putting together a lot of different skill sets, anything can be Kung Fu. Cooking can be Kung Fu. Communication can be Kung Fu. Of course, the physical martial arts and computing skills like this. The, this is Kung Fu in general, as I call it. Okay, And we have to start actually looking at it like that because these are martial skill sets. They are skill sets for a war. And that war is the war for our freedom. So, you know, we go from the absolute fool not really knowing anything about how things work and how to do things to the magus, the magician, the one who has all of the tools of nature arrayed at his table and is able to actually command them in a way. Not as God, but as someone who understands how they work so he can actually sort of direct them to his favor. Okay? And the favor of the aggregate of the whole body of humanity progressing in the way that the will of the universe wants it to in the form of evolutionary development of the species spiritually and in consciousness. That is the whole goal of all of it. And that most of all, beyond a shadow of a doubt, any other characteristic requires the will to sacrifice whatever is required to be sacrificed. And I'm not talking about like satanic animal sacrifice here. I'm talking about making a personal sacrifice with your time, the time of your life, the, your essence of creativity and passion and willpower. If you're not truly dedicated to the great work, don't expect anything good to come out of that effort. You can't half-ass this, folks. You have to have dedication and endless persistence, constant effort. As the old alchemical saying goes, labore et constantia, which means labor and consistency, work and constant effort. It's not just the skills and the labor. It's continuously applying them. And this is stressed over and over and over again in the seminar that I teach how to become the true media. Never give up. Never say die. We don't need people getting black-pilled and giving up now. We need people to be gold-pilled, to develop the skill sets, to double, triple, and quadruple down on their efforts at the most critical time period that we're living in right now. And never say die and never give up. I'm going to leave on this question and on this note for people to consider. Picture someone doing work like the gentleman in this photo and ask the question to yourself, seated at that table, is that a tyrant doing the work of tyranny and enslavement or is that a spiritual warrior doing the will of the universe to advance the, the one great work of ending slavery and continuing humanity's progression in evolutionary development in consciousness as a species. Let me tell you the answer, folks. An individual 
seated at a desk doing work like that through technology, through a computer, can be either one. Technology is a dual-edged sword and it is all about who is wielding it, what their level of awareness and consciousness is, and how they are using that tool. We have to get over our fear of it. We have to use it for the right reason. And if we use it for the right reason, that is when we will truly accomplish the one great work of ending human slavery on planet Earth once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and attention.